Uh, Jesus did shed his blood for us, um, and now he invites us now to join his mission. And that's what we're going to be talking about both this week and next week. We're going to be talking about joining Jesus um, on his mission. So I want to start out with a little bit of a made-up picture uh, but I want you to kind of think about this. Um, so I want you to imagine a church. It can be anywhere. Um, and this church decides that not only is it going to care about what happens inside, but they're going to join Jesus on the outside. They're going to start talking about him in conversations. They're going to start praying with people on the street corners. They're going to take the mission of God, the love and peace and grace and all of that that they know inside their walls, and they're going to take that outside the walls. So let's imagine in this community where there's churches that those people do just that. And more and more people start talking about Jesus. More and more people start sharing his love. More and more people start, through faith, believing in what Jesus Christ has done in their lives and in this town starts to be transformed. Not only does this church grow, the church where the people go out from, but all churches grow. That is to say that God's kingdom grows in that place. More and more conversations, more and more people believe, and then it starts spreading. It starts to spread outside of that community into the wider city. That more and more people talk about Jesus. More and more people are praying to Jesus. More and more people know the grace and truth and love of Jesus Christ. And that's what it means in their life. And then that city starts to be changed by the love of Christ. And they start sending missionaries across the globe. To India and Pakistan and New York City and Boston. To all places. That's the mission of God. In fact, that's not just the mission of God. But to make it more local, that's our mission. That's our mission statement, reaching out to all people to bring them into a living relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what we're about as a church. Not just coming here and joining Jesus here in church, which we do. We join Jesus in church every Sunday. He's with us here in this space, but he's also out there. So so we as Christians not only join him here, but we reach out and join him out there. And the goal isn't that we would broadcast this sermon everywhere. Um, I'm not sure I'm a good enough speaker to preach everywhere, right? But when we broadcast the word of Christ, it goes out of us. It becomes a mission movement when we as individuals, not just as a church, but when we as individuals take um, seriously our place in that mission of God. So with joining Jesus, that's what we're going to be talking about uh, for the next couple weeks here uh, today. Let's begin with prayer, and then we'll jump into the meat of today. Uh, Dear Jesus... Thank you for your love and grace that comes into our lives and reminds us that we're loved by you. Help us to share that with others. Help us to learn from you today. In your name we pray. Amen. So the Department of Homeland Security, kind of with the New York City Transportation Administration, came up with this concept after 9-11. And the concept was simple. If you see something, say something. Has anybody heard of that? See, if you see something, say something, right? It's plastered even on our buses um, around Albany. And the idea of see something, say something was uh, that, the, that um, you could keep America safer, not by having the best agents, which America does. We have great intelligence agents. Not just by having the best um, computer nerds. We have some of the best computer nerds. Not just by um, having the best surveillance cameras. We have some of the best surveillance cameras. But the greatest way to keep America safe was to kind of pseudo-deputize every single American. So, So they want, Department of Homeland Security wants you to be their eyes and ears. They don't want you to be an investigator. Now, if that's your job to investigate, if you have the training, investigate. If not, just see something, say something. It's that simple. If you see something off, say, tell the authorities. Don't be that nosy neighbor that investigates everybody. Don't be that. But just see something, say something. They deputized everybody. Now, now the thing is, the Department of Homeland Security isn't the first person to come up with this. In fact, this is kind of, from the beginning, the mission of God. To see something, to say something. Which brings us to Christmas, right? The shepherds. I know holiday decorations are getting ready to be put out. Christmas decorations are going to be in every Lowe's and Walmart. But Christmas isn't quite here, so just hang on a little bit. Uh, Breathe a sigh of relief, parents. You have just a little bit to prepare yet. Um, But let's talk about Christmas anyway. Um, And the angel said to them, fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. I want to make sure and stop and talk about one phrase in that. 
good news. Now the question is, what is that good news? And a lot of times that we as Christians, I think we rightfully so, but we kind of simplify it. We simplify it down to the good news is that Jesus loves you, he forgave you. Which, by the way, is the good news. Like if you're a Christian and you don't understand that, that Jesus loved you and forgave you, you're like missing Christianity. That, that's what it's all about, that Jesus loved you and forgave you. But the good news is more than just that. It is that. And if you get that, you get it. But it's also more than that. Now, to understand the good news fully, you have to understand the problem or the bad news. The bad news is that we live in a broken world. We live in a sin-filled world, a world where there's hur hurricanes, a world where people do some bad things, a world where a lot of bad things happen, and some of it is the cause of, well, bad people. And guess what? Some of it is the cause of your bad decisions, your faults, your failures. They make the world a difficult place. So if we want to boil all that down, that's the problem of sin. That's what we're facing. But you know, God knew that was an issue. And so what did he do? He sent Jesus. He, sent, he gave the good news that Jesus has come to, guess what, take care of the biggest problem. And the biggest problem is that our sin separates us from God. And he came to fix that. He came to forgive you and love you in order that God might see you as a good person and not as a horrible person. Now that is good news for each and one of us. But see, the mission of God is more than that. That God's working to restore the world to the way that it was before sin came into the world. That the God's mission is also about that restoration process. Have you ever wondered why Jesus took time out of his day to heal people? That's the mission of God. That fixing the problems of the brokenness in the world. Now we as Christians, we're a part of that mission now. We're a part of God making all things new, God correcting everything. Now, a big part of that mission, in fact, I would say the biggest part of that mission, is that people might know that they're forgiven and loved in Jesus Christ. And you know what? That's a big part of the mission that we get to join in. So back to the shepherds, back to that good news. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So right, the, the shepherds saw that uh, glorifying, horrific event. And they were scared but also excited. And then what did they do? They went and they saw Jesus. They went and saw Jesus. They, they witnessed what he meant to the world. And then they left, right? They left and they went out and they built a nice little church. Um, a great building. Um, they had a great Sunday school program, a great February sunshine. Um, it was a nice, comfortable facility with good air conditioning. They probably even had a women's ministry and a, a Saturday morning men's Bible study. They had the greatest choir around, a great praise band. They kind of built all that. And you know what? If ever somebody, welcome, if ever somebody came off the street, they would welcome them with open arms. And they kind of just existed there to kind of learn and grow more about God, right? That's what they did, right? Now, at this point, somebody should have thrown through something at me um, by now, right? Um, no! What it, yeah, there it goes, right? See, I, I shouldn't have said that. No, what'd they do? It's pretty simple. They saw something. They said something. That's the mission of God in a nutshell. They saw something. They, they witnessed what God had done, his grace, love, truth in that baby Jesus, and then they said something about it. They didn't just grow in their knowledge of God, which I believe they did, which is important, but they also, they said something about what they had just witnessed. And I think that in a nutshell is what it means to join Jesus, that we get to come here every Sunday and learn that God loves you, that he forgave you, that there's not a sin that he can't cover up, that God did that for you. So guess what you get to do then? As you go out the door, you get to join Jesus, not convert people on your own. That's not what we're about. But you get to join Jesus because guess what? He's not just in here. He's also out there. And so we get to go out there and share our faith. We get to go out there and pray with people. So Deacon Jesse, and I'm really excited about him preaching next week um, because he's been a part of this joining Jesus from the start. Um, so I'm really excited what he had. But I don't want to share, take all of his sermon, but I do want to kind of set this up a little bit. When we talk about joining Jesus, it's all about you kind of as a person making friends with people in order that Jesus might give you an opportunity to share your faith. 
So I came across this joining Jesus story that I think is incredible. Um, this guy wouldn't have used these words, I don't think, as joining Jesus, but that's what he's doing. So I want to share this story with it. And I want to kind of um, illustrate two things about this story. It's very simple. What this person did was very simple, but yet there's extreme results. And that's what I think joining Jesus is about. It's very simple for us, but God can do powerful things with us as we join it. So I have a few quotes that I'm going to start out by um, with this uh, man. He says, the most important thing I learned is that when you are actively learning about someone else, you are passively teaching them about yourself. So you don't have to go out there and say, hey, I'm going to tell this person about Jesus and make them believe. No, simply enjoy people. Enjoy people. And guess what? As you enjoy people, they're going to, actively, they're going to passively learn about you and what you believe. So great. That's easy, right? Simple? Simple? Okay. Um, here's one more. I don't seek to convert them. But if they spend time with me, they can't hate me. There's people out there that hate Christians. There's people out there that hate the church. Guess what? It's going to be hard for them to hate you. You don't have to convert them. Maybe if you try to convert them, they might hate you. But if you just simply spend time with them, get to know them, they're not going to hate you. So, so I want to make sure and, and tell you kind of the rest of the story. Because I told you it was simple, right? Those two things are simple. We can all do that. But I want to show you the extreme results. So up on the picture, I have two men. Um, on the left up there is a man by the name of Daryl Davis. Um, and on the right is somebody who now is his friend. Now, I know they might not look like friends. They're kind of um, pretty intense people. Um, but they actually are. They're very good friends. Um, and so the surprising thing about this picture is that the guy on the right um, is a white supremacist. He was a member of a group um, similar to the KKK. In fact, he was a leader in that group. He was like a great grand dragon or some crazy thing like that. Um, but anyway, he was a member of a white supremacist group, a, a group that um, wanted to kill people like Daryl. And what Daryl decided that he was going to do is he was going to start befriending and forming relationships with those crazy people that are in those groups. And that's what he did. He set out to have one question answered, why do you hate me? And he did. He sat down with people like this white supremacist that's left his group, and he's had a relationship with them. He took time to, to understand where they were coming from. And you know what? In the process, they started to see him as a human. They started to see him the way that God intended them. And he saw that. And now they're friends. In fact, the crazy thing, I told you, it was a simple idea, but extreme results. Now Daryl Davis has a whole garage full of KKK and other white supremacist um, paraphernalia. And the reason he has that isn't because he's changed and joined the group. The reason he has all of that is because when people leave the Klan, leave other groups like that, they donate their paraphernalia to him. That through his relationships, hundreds of people have left those extremist groups that should have no place in society. Through his simple relationship. Again, I want to paint that picture for you. This is important. A simple thing that Daryl did. The most important thing I learned is that when you are actively learning about someone else, you are passively teaching them about yourself. Can we do that? Yes. What about this? I don't seek to convert them, but if they spend time with me, they can't hate me. Can we do that? Those are simple things. There's people out there that are broken and wounded and, and need the love of Jesus Christ. And we can be that simple relationship to them, not to convert them, not to change them, but simply a relationship with people that are out there that are broken and hurting. Now, for us, joining Jesus might not look the, quite the same as Daryl. In fact, you might not have the same results as Daryl. But God can use you. God can use you to join him in his mission. So, so our task is simple. To get up, to leave these church doors, and to join Jesus on his mission. Now, don't do it right now. Let's finish the service. Be fed by God's grace. But then let's get up. Let's go out there and join him. Now, I think that's a simple thing. It's also sometimes a challenging thing. Um, that's what Pastor Mark was referring to about um, the local missionary group sign-up training. So if you want to walk with other believers that are struggling to do the same thing, to join Jesus, um, sign up for one of these groups. Um, they're in your bulletins. They meet at various times. And Deacon Jesse will talk more next week kind of about how we do this, the, how we use relationships um, to do these things. Um, but let's go. Let's get up. Let's go out there and join Jesus on his mission. Join him in what he's already doing. Um, please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love and grace. 
I thank you for inviting us to join you on your mission. Just help us to take the love and grace that we have and, and share it with others. Not to seek to convert them, but simply to share the joy and the hope that we have in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.